Yo, Chuck. What the Chuck is up, YouTube? In this video, we're going to go over Caesar Cipher. Caesar Cipher is a way to encode a message by shifting letters over to a certain amount of spaces. So if our shift was set to two, then letters like A would become C, and then B would become D, for instance, okay? So that's how it works. Here's our problem statement with a string, and we need to shift each one of these letters 13 times to the right. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is make a function called Caesar all lowercase. Looks like I spelled it wrong here. This should be an A. And this is going to take just a string and then a shift amount, how far we want to shift each individual letter. So this is obviously encoded. We want to decode it. Okay, let me just return the string to make sure everything is firing. And it looks good, it's firing, okay. So the strategy that I'm going to use is not the only one, but um, it's definitely a strategy. We're going to basically map the alphabet to an object. So how that looks, I'm going to first just make a variable called alphabet, which is gonna be a string, and I'm just gonna set that equal to the alphabet. So there I have the alphabet. Let's actually return the length to make sure I actually didn't miss a letter. I'm getting 25, so I definitely did miss a letter. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Okay, I missed H. Let's try now. All right, cool. So here's our alphabet. Like I said, we need to map each one of these uh, letters to an index. So I'm going to do that by just looping over the alphabet. So I'm gonna make it, first I'll make that uh, object, I'll call it map, and then I'll just loop over the alphabet, make a variable i, set it to zero, as long as i is less than alphabet.length, increment i. And here I'm just going to use the map object. I'm going to pass in the letter as the property, so um, or the, the key, I should say. So it'll just be alphabet at I, and that's going to be equal to the indices we're on. So that would be I. So let's see what I have now when I return this. I'll return my map object, and you can see now I have a mapping of every letter and where its index is, which is good. So now what I actually want to do is add the shift amount. So recall the shift amount right now is 13. So if I do that, you'll see that some values like A successfully will shift to 13, but then when I get past these values, these are all invalid because an index at uh, 26 doesn't actually exist, 27 doesn't exist in our alphabet. So to fix that, we need to say if the key at alphabet at i is greater than 25, then we need to subtract it. So I'll say subtract map at alphabet at i, subtract it by 26, because there's 26 letters in the alphabet. So now if I do that, let's see what happens. And you can see we all only have valid numbers now for when we conduct our shift, which is good. So notice how A is 13 and then Z is 12. That's a good indicator that this actually worked correctly. So now I have the proper shift amount. And obviously, if I was to change this shift number, those values would change, as you can see here. But we're going to leave it on 13 because that decodes to this free code camp message. I'm sure you can guess where I got this problem statement from. OK. so. Now that we've done that, we can actually make a result variable. I'll just say result equals an empty string for now. And I'm just going to loop over um, the alphabet and then basically, or, or sorry, I'm going to loop over the string and then 
I'm going to plug it into my map and the map's going to shoot out what the actual letter should be now. So for S, when I plug in S for instance, it should be at index 24. So I'm going to use index 24 to search through my alphabet and find that should be um, one of these values over here. So let's try that. So I'm just going to loop through my string. So it was i is equal to zero, as long as i is less than string dot length, increment i. So we're just looping through the string here. Okay, so we can actually um, just call this letter. This might actually make it make it easier, or just call it char if I can spell char. And I'm going to set that to string at i. So that's just going to be the individual character that I come across. And since we don't care for spaces, so we're, just, we're not going to actually plug those in. So I'll say if char does not equal, and then I'll put in the space, then we need to make this mapping. So then I'm going to say um, result push, we're going to push in or add the result of alphabet at index of map and then string at i. So let's see what happens when we do this. So now I'm going to return the result. And there you have it. It's returning the, uh, the string that we want to have now because as you can see we're adding in the uh, we're basically taking the mapping that we have and then using that to generate an index and then we're applying that index to the alphabet string we created up here and then it's able to basically decode and then we're adding that decoded value to the result result variable and that is how we're getting free code camp but we need to make sure we get the spaces as well so here I'm just gonna say else result plus equals space and that is going to give us the space. And now you can see we get the result of free code camp. And this should actually be lowercase. Um, you could do this with uppercase, but it's going to require you to make different uh, uh, keys for your object, but it's still possible. You could do it both lowercase and uppercase, but you might, at the beginning of this function, you might do something like this, say string is equal to string dot lowercase. believe that's what it's or it's a uh, lower case is that what it is oh it's two lower case my bad there we go okay perfect yeah so you could do it with either uh, capital letters or not or both doesn't matter also if your shift you could also have it be so if your shift was a negative number you could do that as well um, obviously it's not gonna <laughs> It's not going to come out to anything pretty right now, but you would do another if statement inside your loop. If, you know, map at alphabet at index i is less than zero, for instance, then you could just do the reverse logic of here. So instead of uh, subtracting, you would add. So then you go forwards. So we could probably actually test this by saying free code camp and then subtracting 13 and then let's see what happens. And that gives us our initial string back, right? So yeah, that is the Caesar cipher. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it valuable. Please make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.